I'm building a T-Track layout, and today I'm wiring up some signals for a module with a double crossover. T-Track straight modules are created to fit 310 millimeters of straight track, which is the longest section of straight track that Kato makes, which is the double crossover. Now, a double crossover is something that would need some fairly complex signaling, and we're going to wire that up using an Arduino to run that. Now, this is a Klondike's module that I'm using. It's a single module, and it's got a nice little wire hole in the back, which is going to come in handy later. Let's start with the track and signal installation. First is obviously the double crossover, Kato Part 2210. Then I'm using these double signals from the We Honest eBay store. I will link them in the description below. I've bought many signals from them and they have all been great. Once we figure out where everything needs to go, we can start the install. Now, I wanna give a shout out to one of my viewers, Keith, who's an engineer for BNSF. He helped me with the proper signal placement and now I'm gonna get these as close as I can to the proper place on the module because it doesn't quite allow me to get there. Once I have the spots marked, I can drill out the holes for the signals as well as the wire for the turnout. I would check your bits once you get one and just get one to the closest size of this. The parts of the signal that go in are threaded and it comes with nuts for tightening them on so you don't have to get it exact. Once you have all the holes drilled, you can put the signals on. Now you basically have to screw these on, so you have to twist them kind of gently. And I do thread the wires first before I start twisting the signals. And again, make sure you twist that signal carefully. I also lift the modules so the wires can flow freely as I turn the signal so they don't get tangled nearly as much as they would because there are eight wires coming out of each signal and that's a lot. Once that is done, I cut the connector on the double crossover and feed the wire through. I'm not gluing down the track just yet. We'll do that in a little bit. Now we can start the Arduino part of the build. You're going to need an Arduino Mega for this build because I will be using 26 outputs for this. That's 24 for the signals and two for the switch motor. You'll also need an L298N motor driver, some wires with DuPont connectors, two 12 position terminal strips, one four position terminal strip, and I'll also be using some momentary push buttons to trigger the crossover, and you'll need some 470 ohm resistors for that. All of these parts will be listed in the description below. I'll also have a schematic linked below because this is going to be a whirlwind installation that no matter how hard I've tried is not going to be the easiest thing to follow. So it will use the schematic in tandem with the install video. The first thing that I do is set out to determine which wires go to which. I do this by tapping the wires on the ends of a five volt power supply to see what lights up. I then tape together each set of wires so I know which one's which. I also put like a little, little T and B for top and bottom on the signals. I then set out to position everything where it will work best. And once I have that figured out, I start by wiring each of the 12 position terminal strips. I use the male end of the DuPont wires to clamp into the strips, and this works really well. I'm using male to male DuPont connectors so that I can just slide them into the Arduino slots. Since I'm going to have a ton of wires, I try to keep the DuPont wires connected the best I can because they come in little ribbons. For the top signals, I'm using red, yellow, and green. For the bottom ones, I'm using blue, purple, and gray because they come together. Blue is for red, purple is for yellow, and gray is for green. I also mark each signal one through eight once I have the terminal strips in. After doing this, I wire up the four position strip. I put one positive connection on each side and two button connections in the middle. I have some future plans for this module that include some modifications, so I just wanna be able to update the Arduino program without doing serious hardware work. Next, I can wire up the L298M motor driver with its connection to the Arduino. The power for the entire mechanism is going through the motor driver, so the Arduino will take its power from the 5 volt output and send the signal to control it back through the input pins. Once I have everything pre-wired as much as possible, I start attaching components using hot glue. Now it's just a matter of connecting all the signal wires to the terminal positions and the terminal positions to the Arduino. The signals are as follows. Signals one through four are on one strip and signals five through eight are on another strip. Signals one and two, which are the first inside signal pole are here. Signal one uses pins four, five, and six 
for red, yellow, and green respectively. Signal 2 uses pins 7, 8, and 9 for red, yellow, and green respectively. And this keeps going in succession through all eight signals. You should end up with the final green being on pin 27. Next, you'll connect the black power wires to the five volt terminals of the four position strips. That's the ones you've done on each end. And then connect those five volt pins to the Arduino. This is also where the buttons will attach. I will connect the button to one of the five volt terminals on one of its wires. Then I'll split the other wire between analog input A0 and the Arduino ground connection. And this is where you'll need to put a 470 ohm resistor in between the button and that ground connection. And then if you do a second button, which I plan on doing, you'll do the same thing, except that wire will go to A1 instead of A0. I then connect the input one and input two pins on the L298M motor driver to pins two and three on the Arduino and connect the ground and five volt pins from the motor driver to the ground and VIN pins on the Arduino. This is how we're powering everything from that motor driver. Now, once all of that is done, I can connect all of the signal light wires to those terminal strips. This just makes it so much easier versus having to figure out how to connect those wires directly to the Arduino. And you'll notice that these also have resistors pre-wired in them, so there's no need to add any resistors to the signal wires. I then connect the crossover control wires to output 1 and 2 on the motor driver. Then all you need to do is connect some power to it. I'm using a 12 volt 1 amp power supply connected to the 12 volt and ground pins on the motor driver, and I'm using a barrel plug adapter for this. Now I can load the Arduino program. This Arduino program has a lot of code, and frankly, it would take me a long time to go through all of it. I have a download available from my GitHub page that I have linked in the description below. Also, this is the base version of this. I intend to add a lot more complexity to it. Right now, it only shows straight and diverging is aligned and is not prototypically accurate, but that is coming. I want to eventually get to a point where you can cycle through which signal is showing clear, and even I've left room for the Arduino to get information from adjacent signal blocks like my Arduino multi-block signal system. I also want to add modifications for different turnout motors, which actually would not be that difficult. So think about this with a couple of tortoises or some regular snap switch motors, things like that. So you can download the Arduino sketch, open it up and load it into the Arduino. If you're having trouble with this and you've never done this before, I have linked a how-to video on loading programs to an Arduino right here. Once all this is done, I can finally test my setup. Now that I've seen it works, I can use hot glue to secure all of my Arduino connections in place. And here is the final result. So there you go, a signaled double crossover. I know it's not prototypical yet, but it's getting there and I plan to make it more prototypical in the future. Again, everything you've seen in here is linked below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.